I'm waiting for the air to turn off so that I can record. Okay, the air turned off. Hi friends, good to see all of you today. I have a video about compression and threshold and how to set that threshold in Premiere Pro. If you're new around here, my name's Oliver. I like to talk about audio for video, most importantly, and also filmmaking in general, composing, and you know, life and stuff like that. So if that's, if that's your game, <laughs> hit subscribe. <laughs> hit subscribe. No, look, seriously hit subscribe. I'm almost at 10,000 and so you could help me get there. Look, I did a video all about audio tools in 2017 and uh, it's gotten a lot of traction. People have learned a lot from the way I explain how each tool works. However, compressors being one of the most common audio tools, I get a lot of questions on that video about how to actually decide where to set your threshold. I didn't cover that in the video. I just talked about how the thing works. So today I'm gonna talk about, in Premiere specifically, how to decide where to set your threshold. Now it's unhelpful that the stock plugins within Premiere don't have any sort of a visual representation of what's happening. Because for me, I'm a very visual person. I like to see where the audio's at. I like to see what the threshold's doing to it. I like to see it over time, you know, how it's absolute, how it's actually manipulating the audio. Well, that doesn't exist within Premiere. So what you have to do is look at your peaks and actually make a decision in that little box of where to set the threshold and then you gotta use your ears specifically and that's tough if you're not very familiar with, with compressors and how they work. Sorry, I'm squinting a lot because I had a dilated exam today. So in this example right here, as I play through this dialogue audio, watch her peaks over in the meters on the right side if you're just in the standard editing workflow window of Premiere. So there are some sibilances and plosives that jump all the way up to negative eight, negative six even, but for the most part, it's staying between negative 15 and negative 12, sometimes negative 10. Well, just kind of decide an in-between average. And in this case, I'm gonna say negative 12 is that in-between average. Average peak, I'm talking about peak, not loudness. So after deciding that negative 12 is our average peak, our average peak of the audio, we're gonna open up the compressor, in this case, in the track mixer window, that affects all the audio within that entire track. If you'd rather grab it from the effects menu and throw it actually on a single piece of audio in your sequence, that's fine too. Both do the same thing. I like to manipulate it all at once. Your project may call for something different. The compressor works the same way regardless. Open up the actual compressor, set the ratio to four to one, which is a really nice and gentle compression for dialogue. You can even go three to one if you're a little worried about over compressing. That just means it's gonna quarter anything above the threshold. Watch the video from 2017 if you want more info about that and to see my bad handwriting and bad drawings of rivers. Now, what I tell people that are new to compressors and thresholds. Your threshold is when the compressor turns on and starts acting on the audio. So take that average peak that you decided based on looking at the actual levels, in our case, negative 12, and dial it back three to six decibels. So we're gonna go to negative 15. Can it keep it real gentle, real nice? We're not trying to smash this and make it sound like a radio DJ. We just want it to be more consistent over time, sounding professional and clean. Set that, listen through it. You can even look at the peaks in this example. I, you know, they, they're a lot more consistent because it's actually working. So that's literally it. See the peaks, choose where your average peak is based on your actual audio. Bring the threshold to about three to six decibels below that peak and you're gonna have a really nice signal for dialogue. This is for dialogue only. I'm not talking about music or full mix or mastering or anything, just dialogue. That way, your video audio is a lot more consistent, nice, and good. Also, if you're in Adobe Audition, this works the exact same way. Also, if you're in Final Cut, this works the exact same way. Also, if you're in Logic or Ableton or anything, it, it's the exact same principle regardless of where you're at. Compressors may look different, but the parameters are the same and the ideas are the same behind it. I hope this helps. Let's clean up all our audio together and continue spreading the audio gospel in 2019. <laughs> Just got a new tat yesterday, what do you think? It's still in Saran Wrap. Josh Martin Art, check him out. Okay, it's been a little bit for me. It's been about a month since I've uploaded a video due to many, many, many reasons and excuses, but I'm back. Next week, I'm talking about the AirPods 2 and whether or not you should buy them, so tune in for that. It's like a radio, tune on in. Please subscribe, share the channel with your friends. I'm like 400 away from 10,000, and that's a huge milestone for me here on this channel, and I love it, and I love you, and I'll see you next week.